Hello, my name is Shirley, and I am a 31-year-old office worker. I married a man named Mason a year ago. We met through a blind date, and after a year and a half of dating, he proposed. I had always dreamt of settling down, so despite feeling it was a bit rushed, I accepted his proposal. However, looking back, I realize I should have approached things more cautiously. Shortly after our wedding, Mason abruptly decided to switch jobs. Surprised, I asked him why he made such a sudden change. He explained that his previous job hadn't allowed him to fully utilize his abilities. Even more shocking was the revelation that he had already resigned and would be leaving his job at the end of the month. Fortunately, he secured another job quickly, but it paid less than his previous one. Initially, I wasn't too concerned because I was also employed. But then, Mason began urging me to quit my job. I might have considered it if his new income was sufficient for both of us. However, with his recent job change, his salary was lower, and he kept saying it would increase soon, without any confirmation of when. Quitting my job under such uncertain financial conditions seemed risky. We needed my income to continue saving and to manage our basic expenses like rent and car payments. It simply wasn't feasible to rely solely on Mason's current salary. One evening, Mason handed me divorce papers, seemingly to intimidate me. You know I'm ready for this whenever, he challenged. In response, I urged him to calm down and reconsider what he had just said. Undeterred, Mason got up and retreated to his room. This confrontation left me reflecting on the quick decisions and the unexpected turn my life had taken since meeting Mason. I told Mason I wouldn't quit my job until his salary improved. He seemed to accept this at first, but the topic resurfaced repeatedly. Every time he brought it up, I gave him the same steadfast response. Now, a year into our marriage, his salary hadn't budged and he continued to press the issue. When are you going to quit? He would ask. Sometimes I was tempted to snap back sarcastically, but I restrained myself knowing our financial stability depended on my income. If quitting my job was so important to him, I felt he should focus on advancing his career to earn sufficiently. As time went on, I began to unravel why Mason was so persistent about me leaving my job. It became clear during our visits to his parents' house. Whenever we were with his mother, Martha, Mason would make a show of concern, telling her he wanted to ease her life. Martha would thank him, and then Mason would look at me significantly as if nudging me towards resignation. He suggested that his mother needed help, but Martha was far from helpless. She was healthy and active and even worked a part-time job that supported her hobbies and social life. She clearly didn't need me to look after her, yet Mason kept pushing. If only one of us were home during the day, we could check on mom daily, he once said out of the blue. It seemed he envisioned me visiting Martha every day, which sounded overwhelming and unnecessary. I questioned him directly, asking what he expected me to do since Martha was perfectly capable on her own. Mason listed mundane tasks like helping with housework or running errands. It was evident he had ideas about how I could contribute but none of them seemed to necessitate abandoning my career. This constant cycle of requests and explanations was draining. I needed Mason to understand that while I was happy to support his family when necessary, sacrificing my job without a compelling reason was not a decision I could agree to lightly. But Martha has her part-time job and spends most of her days out with friends, right? I pointed out to Mason when he suggested I could handle the housework during the day. His response baffled me. Was he suggesting I become his mother's maid? It seemed Mason was very concerned about maintaining a certain image, particularly in front of his parents. If he was so eager to take care of them, why not handle the household chores himself? Despite his insistence, I remained firm in my decision not to quit my job. I also chose not to visit my in-laws on my days off, although I made an effort to see them during major holidays like New Year's. Reflecting on our visits, I noticed a pattern. Mason often delegated tasks to me. He'd ask me to tidy up, assist his mom, or run errands. I resisted these requests, 
When he suggested I go to the store, I'd retort, don't you know this area better than I do? His reply was always that it wouldn't look right if he did it himself, a rationale I found puzzling and manipulative. It seemed like he was more interested in controlling the situation and projecting an image of familial care than genuinely caring for his parents or me. Over time, my view of Mason shifted. It appeared he was more invested in appearances than true affection or respect for me. When I finally confronted him, asking why he didn't pitch in or even quit his job to care for his mother, his reaction was telling. He looked disgusted and uncomfortable, saying, That's not something I'm supposed to do. I'm giving you these instructions so my mom will think you are a considerate, useful wife. I hope you realize how kind I am to you. His words were revealing. Essentially, he wanted to offload all the demanding tasks onto me and showcase his virtue as if it were an extraordinary feat. But I am not his servant or slave, nor do I deserve to be treated with disrespect in front of my in-laws. It became increasingly clear that Mason's priorities were skewed, valuing appearances over genuine partnership and support. If Mason keeps up with his unreasonable demands, I won't stay quiet. I'll assert myself. Despite numerous discussions, Mason remains unchanged, constantly pestering me with the same old question, are you going to quit your job? Additionally, every time we visit my in-laws, he continues to boss me around just as he always has. Reaching my limit, I decided it was crucial to have a serious conversation with him. We need to talk about our future, I initiated, hoping to steer our conversation into something constructive. What are you even trying to say? Mason retorted, clearly annoyed. I'm honestly fed up. I'm tired of you repeatedly asking me when I'll quit my job, and I'm exhausted from you pressuring me to take care of Martha. I laid out my grievances. Why are you fed up with that? You're my wife, and it's your duty to care for your husband's parents, Mason countered. Don't you think that's a huge responsibility to place solely on me? Shouldn't you, as their biological child, be responsible for helping with the housework and taking care of your parents in the first place? I challenged his outdated views. No way, it's the wife's duty to do it. Are you the kind of person who doesn't care about family? Mason accused, visibly upset by my resistance. I'm disappointed to hear you say that, he added. Seizing the opportunity to expose the double standard, I asked, then let me ask you this. How have you been taking care of my parents? If I asked you to care for my parents, would you do it then? Mason looked at me blankly, unable to grasp the parallel. What are you saying? Why should a husband take care of his wife's parents? So, does that mean you won't take care of my parents now or ever? I pressed, trying to highlight his inconsistency. The husband's parents and wife's parents are completely different, Mason replied, missing the point. What difference does that make anyway? I don't get it, I said, feeling frustrated. I didn't realize you were so clueless. It's like talking to my old boss, I continued, dismayed by his lack of understanding. What are you saying? Mason asked, confused. I'm saying the husband's parents should come first, and you should take care of your wife's parents, I replied, trying to emphasize the importance of mutual support and equality in our responsibilities. I had to clarify what I was trying to say, so I exclaimed, So you only prioritize your own family by blood? I'm so disappointed in you. I won't be visiting your parents anymore. Why would you do that? Enough is enough. I'm the one who wants you to stop this nonsense, I retorted. No way, how dare you talk back like that? My mom is right. Mason shot back, his temper flaring. Ha! Mom was talking about you. She said you're a badly behaved wife. That's why she gave me this, Mason said, pulling a piece of paper from his bag. It was divorce papers. What? You already had divorce papers ready? I was shocked, but Mason seemed strangely proud. See? I scared you, didn't I? I'm prepared for this any time, so think about what you just said, Mason declared smugly before leaving for his room. Unbelievable. Why is Mason so selfish? That look of triumph on his face, it's clear the divorce papers are just a threat to make me obey him. The fact that Martha was involved made me even more suspicious. Mason is acting like a puppet for his mom, trying to control me while following her orders. It's ridiculous. I won't let Mason have his way. 
How can he not see that our marriage is in trouble when he acts like this? His lack of understanding just annoys me more. Mason had already completed the divorce papers and handed them to me with witnesses including Martha and his friends. This meant I could sign and file them whenever I chose. The next day, after Mason went to work, I filled out the divorce papers and submitted them to the city office. As a precaution, I also filed a notice of non-acceptance of the marriage certificate. I called my parents and explained the situation, knowing Mason might threaten to file a marriage certificate on his own. When my parents learned that I had prepared the divorce papers, they were initially shocked but fully supported my decision, outraged by Mason's behavior. They immediately offered to help me move my belongings. Taking a leave from work, I had my parents come over and we relocated all my things to their house while Mason was away. I decided to stay with my parents for a while. It was the first time in a long time that I felt truly comfortable and at ease in their home. Reflecting on my marriage, it became clear that Mason never contributed his fair share to our household chores. I was the one cooking dinner after long work days and handling all the cleaning and laundry on my days off. On top of this, he expected me to also care for his parents, which was just not feasible. That evening, Mason called me probably just back from work. Hello? Hey, where are you right now? He asked. I'm at my parents' house, I replied. Oh, why would you go back there without my permission? And where's all your stuff? Don't tell me you're staying the night, he questioned, his tone revealing his surprise and selfishness. I almost laughed at how oblivious he was to the seriousness of the situation, thinking I was merely staying overnight when I had taken most of my belongings with me. I'm not coming back, I said firmly. What are you talking about? Come back here and make me some food, he demanded. Make it yourself, I replied, ending the call. I couldn't entertain a conversation about divorce with him if he continued to behave so dismissively. I decided to wait for him to come to my parents' house and blocked his number to give myself some peace. A week later, Mason showed up at my parents' home, accompanied by his parents. They all wore serious expressions as we met in the living room, three against three. How could you do this? How could you leave without my permission? Mason demanded, his voice filled with incredulity and accusation. You were treating me like a housekeeper, Mason. All I ever asked was that you take care of your family responsibilities, I responded, standing my ground. I countered, that's not true. What kind of wife am I if I don't take care of Mason? Martha gave me a fierce glare. My father began to tremble with anger, but I quickly stepped in. Mason told me to quit my job and take care of Martha, claiming it was my duty as his wife. Yet when it comes to my own family, he expects me to handle everything alone. Ultimately, Mason wants obedience and uses me to care for his parents while taking credit for it. That's why he prioritizes his parents over mine. Have you heard Mason say these things? Martha continued to glare, but Liam looked confused, indicating he hadn't been aware of this before. Let me clear the air. Mason said suddenly, bringing up the divorce papers and claiming it was all Martha's idea. Why would you suggest that? Liam asked, clearly surprised. Oh no, it's because Camilla has an attitude problem, Martha stammered. And did you say that Camilla's parents aren't a priority? I pressed. Well, it's only natural that your parents come first, Martha retorted defensively. Don't be absurd, I came here to support you after hearing about the unfair treatment Camilla endured, but now it seems you're the one at fault. Don't hide behind her parents' authority to get your way, Liam said, making Mason visibly shrink in his seat. Liam then apologized to me and my parents. I'm truly sorry for the trouble caused by my foolish son. I will have a serious talk with him. Liam, you're not to blame at all, so please don't apologize, I replied. Thank you for your kind words, but there's something else I need to say. I turned to Mason, who was now nervous. The divorce papers you gave me, I've already filed them. We're no longer married. Mason and Martha both turned pale. Why did you file them without my permission? Mason demanded, shocked. 
You told me I could file them whenever I wanted. Besides, you had already filled out your part and had Martha sign as a witness. I calmly explained the situation, but Mason was clearly at a loss for words. Seeing the tension, Liam, furious, intervened. Mason, you used divorce as a threat, he exclaimed, and unable to contain his anger, slapped Mason across the face. Martha, witnessing this, was visibly shaken. Liam turned to me and apologized sincerely. I apologize deeply that you had to witness this. You have every right to divorce this fool. On behalf of Mason, I'm truly sorry for the ruin brought upon your marriage, he said, his grip tightening on Mason's collar as he demanded apologies from both Mason and Martha before ushering them out of the house. Later, I thanked Liam for his intervention. He assured me that all of Mason's assets and property were transferred to me without any hassle. Given my higher income and the effort I had put into managing our household, it was a relief to secure everything from our marriage. I later found out that Liam had divorced Martha, clearly disgusted by her actions. One day I ran into a colleague from Mason's old workplace who shared some surprising news. Mason had not been performing well at his job and often received harsh criticism from his boss. In defiance, Mason resigned and switched jobs, which only added to my frustration with him. Rather than taking responsibility for his shortcomings, he blamed others, which likely contributed to his lower pay at the new job. Now, I'm relieved to have left him. I've rented a cozy apartment and am enjoying living independently. Work is going smoothly and I even received a recent raise. Currently, I'm not interested in relationships and prefer to focus on my career. Mason always cared more about appearances than actual abilities. He maintained a facade at home but failed to improve professionally. Sadly, many spouses use divorce threats as leverage, thinking they're powerful, but it's a big mistake. I hope they realize their folly and find happiness alone. Meanwhile, I'm grateful to have moved on from Mason and look forward to meeting someone special in the future, when I'm ready.